hello good morning everyone and welcome to my channel today my name is Chekube Mandichie um, today we want to learn the process of uh, specifying and estimating an error correction model okay and this process usually begins with uh, testing for stationarity or with testing for unit roots whereby we also test for co-integration and then error correction mechanism and um, what actually inform this uh, process is because of the non-stationality of most economic time series before economic researchers became conscious of the stationarity properties of the relevant time series they used in economic analysis uh, economic policies had relied on level equation OLS regression under the assumption that the underlying time series are stationary. Now, a stationary time series is the one whose mean, variance, and autocovariance are time invariant. Okay? And um, uh, it has actually been proven that most economic time series in real life are non stationary. And um, OLS regression involving non stationary time series usually results to spurious regression. Now, spurious regression, as we know, is a regression that is saddled with misleading outcome. It's, it, it is false. It's false. It has false result and can lead to wrong conclusion. Okay. And of course, in order to avoid that, economic researchers have to start the process of time series analysis with test of stationarity or test of unit root. Okay. And the essence is that if you discover that the underlying time series are non stationary you have to apply the method of differencing to make them stationary okay and um, there are various procedures for this test conventionally we know of the augmented decay fuller test and philip perron test we are going to be using these two procedures for our test today for unit roots okay and um, the second process is the that of co-integration Okay, is that of co-integration. Now, the unit root test we are going to do can only tell us whether the underlying time series that we have here are stationary or not, but cannot provide solution to the problem of non-stationarity. Because um, the, the, the solution comes with us trying to, you know, apply, uh, difference the time series to make them stationary. And um, the number of times we have to difference this time series to make them stationary shows the order of integration of those time series. For instance, if we if we test for unit root and saw that at level a time series has is, is stationary, we say that it is integrated at order zero. If we test again, if we test and we see that uh, it is non stationary, but uh, became stationary at first difference, we say that it is integrated at order one. If it became stationary at second difference, we say that it is integrated at order two. So that is the process of identifying the order of integration of time series by way of testing for unit root. Now, uh, in the process of uh, estimating a regression model, we have to difference the time series accordingly and then be able to uh, work with a reasonable, produce reasonable uh, results. Okay? But then, um, how, how do we bring co-integration into this process? The 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 the, the 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 problem of non stationarity of time series and the need to avoid porous regression had led to economies relying on different stationary time series. Okay, different stationary time series, and there's a problem with different stationary time series because whenever we different time series, we inevitably incur loss of important long run information. So the, 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 we, we get to eliminate or destroy the long run characteristics of the time series whenever we different them. And that is why we, uh, uh, the expert brought the issue of a test of co-integration. Now, the test of co-integration is to know if some set of similar non-stationary time series will have uh, a long-run relationship. For instance, if their linear combination is stationary. Now, if their linear combination is stationary, that means they are co-integrated. And if they are co-integrated, it then implies that uh, regression can actually proceed without generating spurious results. Okay, why do we say this? Because co-integration actually shows us that if deviation may occur, uh, we see that as 
being temporary as equilibrium must be restored in the long run so that is actually what that means and if for us to formalize this assumption we apply error correction mechanism where we now bring in the difference form of the various uh, uh, time series variables plus the lag value of the error correction i mean uh, the lag value of the error term from the static uh, uh, level equation okay which is the linear combination uh, we also expect that parameter to show negative sign and of course uh, significant to show that equilibrium is restored in the long run so let us begin with our work file here named cointegration and error correction the uh, ecm we have our variables like we already always have okay we have a uh, gdp mop and top here and we'll be working with these three variables the starting point is to uh, a, a test for unit root we test this for unit root uh, using augmented decay fuller you see it is not stationary at level we test again at first difference it became stationary you can see that it is now stationary okay it is now stationary at uh, 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 first difference okay according to ADF. Now, if we return again to test with Philip Perron, can test with Philip Perron, we give it at level, test again, it is non stationary. We test as first difference, it is stationary. Now, we have seen that TOP is order one variable. Now, we test GDP, um, we use ADF first, we test at level it is non stationary we test at first difference it became stationary you can see the value here okay this value is less than the critical value so we reject the null hypothesis that the difference gdp has unit roots okay so um we test back again with a filiperon filiperon at level we see it is non stationary we test again is at first difference we see that it became stationary at first difference we simply show that rogdp is also order one variable now we test mop we test mop we return to adf we use it first to test we see that it is not stationary at level we go back again to test at first difference we see that uh, it is stationary at first difference here it is less than the critical value at five percent so we can actually reject the null hypothesis at five percent okay now we test back with uh, philip perron we test with philip perron uh, we test at level uh, non-stationary we test again at first difference um, it became stationary so with adf and philip perron all our variables here are all other one variables okay so this has actually been carried out for unit root test has been carried out and what we can actually say is that all our variables are non-stationary variables so this means that if they, they tend to go in, 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 kind of have kind of movement they wander over time without returning to any mean value and this is highly explosive for a regression now what do we do next we test for co-integration okay test for co-integration now we say we are going to test with uh, Johansson co-integration and we are going to also test with NJ Granger residual based co-integration so NJ Granger residual based co-integration as the name implies is based on testing the residual or the error term of uh, 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 or the linear combination of uh, these variables uh, for unit roots and uh, according to nj granger residual based test uh, cointegration exists if the linear combination of these variables is stationary for instance if the variables are order one that their linear combination which is the error term should be order zero variable okay that is the position of uh, nj granger and this is based on the assumption that all the variables are integrated at the same order
So the necessary condition for uh, stage, uh, uh, for co-integration exists among variables according to uh, uh, Angel Granger is that they are integrated of the same order. Okay, and um, what this implies is that there is a restriction that all the variables for you could to consider them for co-integration within the framework of NJ Granger, they must have to be integrated at the same order, basically order one. And then um, the process is that if they are integrated at the same order, their residual has to be co-integrated at uh, a, a order less than original variables. So how do we do? We open these variables as equations, starting with GDP, which we consider the dependent variable. Open them as a uh, equation. We estimate this equation using OLS. After estimating this equation, we generate the residual term. We have estimated this equation. Look at the estimated model. Now, for us to generate the residual and then test the residual for unit root, we have to go to probe. You look at this place, you can see make residual series. Okay, we click on make residual series. We can name it anything we want, but most times people name it ECM. We name it ECM. Okay. Now we have made generated the residual series and we named it ECM. So this time around, we're going to use the augmented decapular procedure to test this residual for unit root and see whether it is stationary at level. Okay. If it is stationary at level, we conclude that there is a co-integration between RGDP and the independent variables of this analysis. So we test and we can see that um, at level, the augmented decapular test is significant at 5%, which means we are rejecting the null that the error term has unit root at 5%. Okay. Now you can also verify with uh, Philippe Perron. Uh, this with Philip Perron and we also saw that we all got the same conclusion about that so we, this simply means that the linear combination of these variables when GDP is the dependent variable is stationary which means that the variables are co-integrated okay the variables are co-integrated so what this translates to now is that since we have confirmed that this there is a co-integration between GDP and these variables. We can now go ahead and interpret this coefficient in line with long run, uh, 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 long run. Okay, when in line with long run. So what this means is that this model is a long run model. It is not really a scorer's result. Okay, but a long run model. Now. Um, but then um, uh, 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 you may not totally rely on this process because when you look at this result now, you see that the arrow square here is greater than the W Watson, which is a simple rule of thumb for detecting uh, spurious uh, regression. But what we are saying in essence is that if co-integration is confirmed between these variables, which means that we can go ahead and interpret this coefficient if we like. Okay, this is the procedure for NJ Granger integration okay now we're going to uh, follow the next uh, process of testing for co-integration which is the one of uh, uh, Johansson co-integration now Johansson co-integration unlike the NJ Granger is for a system of equation remember that NJ Granger is for a single equation while Johansson is for a system of equations okay which means um, Johansson may have a uh, the ability has the ability to detect uh, the presence of more than one co-integrating equations, which we cannot really find using the uh, uh, NJ Granger residual-based approach. Okay. Now, for the uh, for the uh, Johansson, we can pick the variables again and open them as a group. Okay. Open them as a group. Within the group, we can go to co-integration test and click on Johansson okay here we leave the option at option 3 and uh, because we are dealing with another data we may have to use a, a 1 to 2 lag 1 to 2 okay there's no heterogeneous variables here so we click ok we click ok we see that three statistics identifies or indicates one co-integrating equation while uh, maximum aging statistic also 
indicate one co-integrating equation. So indication of one co-integrating equation because we are actually interested in the case of GDP being the dependent variable, we can actually conclude that there is a co-integration between GDP and these other variables. Now, when you do not want to rely on the static model that we have estimated by this equation here, we can actually go into the normalized co-integrating coefficient of the Johansson test. And this normalized co-integrating coefficient is here, whereby we turn it into an equation uh, with GDP as the dependent variable and uh, these other ones as the independent variables. But we have to multiply uh, uh, by minus 1, which means that all negative coefficients will become positive in the subsequent analysis. This is based on normalized co-integrating uh, coefficient and not arbitrarily uh, done unlike the previous uh, procedure. Now, that is it for Johansson co-integration. We also found evidence of co-integration based on Johansson. So this time around, we have to now estimate an error correction mechanism, an error correction model. An error correction model for a single equation, we can open these variables as equation again but this time around uh, this time around we have to apply the difference uh, operators uh, on the variables okay we have to apply the different operators you can see i'm attaching the uh, to uh, the variables okay now we want the ecm we have generated because we are going to lag it by one period we now need to bring uh, the constant parameter to this uh, position so you can see now our error correction mechanism okay this is a static error correction model okay we click okay you can see the result here the error correction term is negative and though not significant this may be because we did not log the variables and um, uh, but then um, we expect it to be negative. Then another way you can also uh, add lags to this uh, uh, independent variables you can add lags and produce what is called over parameterized model where you can now use general to specific method to uh, 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 bring about the parsimonious model. Okay, now that is it for ECM. Now somebody may also be interested in uh, uh, constructing vector error correction model you know most times when uh, johansson is more uh, uh, suited for uh, vecm why angel granger is for normal cecm okay if we want that we can actually move this into var uh, specification whereby we can open as a vector error uh, auto uh, vector auto regression so but this time around you go to vector error correction okay vector error correction now we leave this number of integration equations at one and of course leave the lag at one to two okay and um, uh, we estimate okay now if we estimate this this first part of this model is the long run uh, the, is the long run model okay of course this is also the same thing with the uh, long run model we uh, normalized integrating coefficient we spotted in the Johansson test okay here is now the error correction specification where here GDP is a dependent variable with other independent variables okay these are the error correction term these are the error correction term okay and so on and so forth so this is the process of constructing ECM and VECM starting from unit through test and uh, through uh, co-integration and of course error correction mechanism. Thank you very much for your time. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel, share to your people, uh, your friends and